Tetris is one of the most popular video games of all time, and I have made it a yearly tradition at this point to code a Tetris clone every year. But this year, I wanted to try something a little different. In Tetris, different shapes fall from the top of the screen to the bottom, and the goal is to move the shapes down and to fill each line so that it can be cleared. But who says the shapes have to fall down? Now it would be silly to just flip Tetris upside down so that the shapes move upwards instead, because nothing really would be changed by doing so. But what if, instead, the Tetris grid was taller, and the shapes started in the middle, and alternated between falling downwards and upwards? This idea would become the basis for what I wanted to create, a version of Tetris with multi-directionality. To start though, it seemed like a good idea to make standard Tetris first. So as all games begin, I created a project and began to write some code to create a window. Well that was easy. The next thing to do is to actually make the Tetris grid. All that is required for the grid is a 2D array to represent each piece but I decided to turn the grid itself into its own class, so that I could easily add functionality to it. Then, I could pass the grid into a function to render it, and we have a basic renderer working. Since the grid is full right now, I decided to fill the grid with some noise, by just alternating its state between on and off, to make sure that it's only rendering solid tiles, and it looks good to me. So now that the grid is done, we actually have to make this into Tetris, but where do we start? Well, let's make some shapes. These are all of the shapes in Tetris, and as you can see, the longest shape is the line, being four pieces long. So in order to store these shapes, I need an array at least four by four pieces big, but I decided to make the array five by five so that most of the shapes would be centered. Then I made up a class for the shape to store some basic information about it, such as its current position. So to move the piece, all I need to do is to alter the position of the shape every so many frames. Now to get the shapes to have collision with each other, and the floor, I wrote a method that determines if the shape intersects with anything. Then, when the shape is moved down, if an intersection is detected, it moves the shape back up and places it on the grid, and a new shape is generated. So now that we can move the shapes around, we are still missing something important, and that is rotation. Rotation might sound like a difficult thing to implement, but it's actually rather simple. I have a method in the shape class called getPiece, and it returns the individual pieces of a shape, depending on where in the array a piece is needed. So to implement rotation, all that we have to do is to modify the position that is passed into the method for each of the 90 degree rotations. And after mapping the rotation to a key, the shape is able to rotate around its axis. Before I implement the multidirectionality, I thought that I would mention that I added a special feature already that I think you might find interesting. Watch this. Yep, the shapes wrap around the sides. Now I'm sure there are two questions that come to mind. First, how did you implement this? And second, why did you implement this? Well, to implement it, I added a method to the grid class called constrain piece position that simply modifies the position of the pieces within the shape so that once they go off the edges of the grid, it resets them back to the start using a modulus operation. The modulus operation simply returns the remainder after dividing two numbers, so it allows a number to constantly loop around, regardless of how big it is. Now the reason I wanted to add this is because it actually comes in handy when you're plying. Whether you need to sneak a shape around a blocked off corner, or you need to split a shape into two, there are so many situations in which this could come in handy. Another good use is when you really need to move a shape quickly to the other side of the grid, but it is too many tiles away. Well, you could just save time by wrapping it around the edge instead. All right, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's finally time to implement the multi-directionality. The first part of this was to get all of the shape dropping code to flip directions when I needed it to. Perfect. Then I went through and rewrote the line clearing code so that the lines could be flipped in both directions, which was actually a pain in the neck the problem is, is that I had to split the grid into two sections for clearing. 
one for the normal area and one for the upside down area, and that requires some decently clever code to do so. But it now works, and I have it so that when a new shape spawns, it changes directions. So it alternates between the two. Now since most of the gameplay is now done, let's spruce this thing up and make it into something truly awesome. Let's go. It's finally done! Some projects that seem so simple can take up enormous amounts of time, and this game is no exception. I ended up settling on the name Reverse Tetris. I know, really creative. The UI is very bare bones, but let's start a game anyway. It plays pretty much how you'd expect it to, but more polished than before. One of the best details I added is that since there are three different modes to play in, when you go into dual mode, which is when the shapes go in both directions, the background reflects this. And in Classic and Reverse, it changes with it as well. I was so hyped once I had finished this project. I had it all planned out. I was going to upload this to Itch for free, and everybody could play it. And then I could ride off into the sunset happily ever after. But then I realized something. The Tetris company doesn't exactly like non-licensed Tetris games. In fact, if I was to upload this anywhere, there would be a good chance that I could get sued, or at the very least get a season assist. So unfortunately, that's how it ends. Game over. Sorry if I gave off the impression to you guys that you could play this game earlier, but I really hope you found some enjoyment in this video, because although I'm a little bit upset at the result, I had a good time making this. If any of you want to take this idea for something else, go ahead, because I would love to see this more fleshed out. Anyways, thank you guys as always for watching, and for your support. You guys mean the world to me, and I want to keep making better and better videos. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye